Hello, my friends, and happy Sunday, and welcome to this week's edition of My Journey with Jesus. My name is Dave Little, and I am so pleased that you all have tuned in to this week's video. I'm not a professional speaker. I'm just a guy living in Madison, Wisconsin, and God has laid it on my heart to use my YouTube channel each week to talk about the things that I have learned in studying his word and walking imperfectly with him on this journey. So thank you all for joining us. And as you know, we have been working our way through the book of Psalms, and this week we continue our journey, our journey through the book. This week my reading covered Psalms 102 through 105. And as I read these Psalms, a theme emerged of God at work in various ways demonstrating his power and his love for his people. He cares for those who are needy and afflicted. God sustains and nurtures his people throughout the generations. God watches over his creation. He works through history to accomplish his purposes. What an awesome God we serve. As I dove deeper into these psalms, God pointed me to some truths in Psalm 102 that I would like to discuss today. Uh, psalm 102 is one of the psalms that is classified as an individual lament. The laments are psalms that are focused on the trials and tribulations of the author who pleads to God for deliverance. The Psalms of Lament follow a pretty consistent pattern. The psalmist pleads with God to hear his prayer. He presents the dilemma and appeals for help. He expresses faith in the power and goodness of God to intervene. And the psalmist expresses thanksgiving and praise for the promised works of God in response to his prayer. I enjoyed this quote from one of the commentaries I explored this week. Not everything in this altar is happy clappy, because not everything in life is happy clappy. And we see these laments scattered through the book of Psalms. About a quarter of the Psalms are included in this class of the individual laments. And so with that as our background, let's explore what God teaches us in Psalm 102. Hear my prayer, O Lord, and let my cry for help come to you. Do not hide your face from me in the day of my distress. Incline your ear to me in the day when I call. Answer me quickly. The psalmist comes before God in a state of distress, and he doesn't hold back. He lays it all out there before the Lord. He's not trying to put up a false show of strength. He's hurting and only God can deliver him. Do not hide your face from me in the day of distress. Incline your ear to me in the day when I call, answer me quickly. You can hear the desperation in his writing. It's like the cry of a drowning man in need of a life preserver. Our need for God is not an issue of convenience. It's a matter of life and death. And as I reflected on that, I asked myself the question, do we approach God this way? Do we recognize our need for God as a matter of life and death? I know I don't. My usual approach is to try and fix things myself, to rely on my own strength and wisdom, to handle my own business. And then when all else fails, I think to myself, oh, gee whiz, maybe I should consider praying about this thing. But the example of the psalmist here in Psalm 102 was very instructive to me this week. Our need for God is real, and our need for God is urgent, and we should pray with desperation for God to provide his love and his mercy and his wisdom in the face of our hopeless condition. Not only does the psalmist pray desperately, he prays honestly. Listen to how the psalmist lays bare his emotions in verses 8 through 11. My enemies have reproached me all day long. Those who deride me have used my name as a curse. 
For I have eaten ashes like bread and mingled my drink with weeping. Because of your indignation and your wrath, you have lifted me up and cast me away. My days are like a lengthened shadow, and I wither away like grass. From start to finish, Psalm 102 expresses the feelings of the psalmist in a number of vivid illustrations. Depression, loss of appetite, loss of weight, anxiety, insomnia, loneliness, restlessness. These are all things that are included right here in Psalm 102. And when we are in distress, I think it's healthy for us to bring our raw emotions and feelings before God. If you're angry, tell God about it. If you're frustrated, yell at God. God wants to hear from the deepest places of our hearts. Our usual inclination is to tone things down when we come before God, like we're visiting our sick grandma and we want to be strong and we want to keep the conversation pleasant and we, and we don't want you know, all of the baggage that we carry to be out there, uh, you know, spoiling a, a pleasant conversation. But that's not what we read in Psalm 102. God wants to comfort us in our suffering and soothe us in our anxiety. So we shouldn't mince words and we shouldn't sugarcoat our feelings when we pray. Now, as we're discussing Psalm 102 and, and the angst and, and the powerful feelings that are expressed here, it's important also to see this passage in a broader context. This psalm is not only an expression of individual affliction, this psalm is also prophetic. It points us toward the crucifixion of Jesus Christ. The suffering of the psalmist and the reproach of the psalmist at the hands of enemies point us to the arrest and persecution of Jesus. Verse 10 in particular is a specific allusion to the cross. You have lifted me up and cast me away. Uh, this is prophetic. And we'll see more of the prophetic elements of Psalm 102 as we, uh, as we go along in today's discussion. So, Psalm 102 teaches us to pray desperately and to pray honestly in our times of need. And Psalm 102 concludes with a third inspiring lesson. We are to pray with confidence. But you, O Lord, abide forever in your name to all generations. You will arise and you will have compassion on Zion. For it is time to be gracious to her. The appointed time has come. God will show compassion and grace to his people. This will be written for the generation to come, that a people yet to be created may praise the Lord. For he looked down from his holy height. From heaven the Lord gazed upon the earth to hear the groaning of the prisoner, to set free those who were doomed to death. A people yet to be created will praise the Lord. The Lord looks down from heaven. Why? The Lord looks down from heaven to hear our cries and to set us free. In spite of his desperation and his despair, the, the, the psalmist in Psalm 102 sees the power and love, the power and the love of God in heaven. And he calls out to God with faith, that God will meet his needs. This is inspiring to us all, and it's inspiring to me personally. Uh, you know, just last week here on the video, we spoke about the challenges of walking in integrity. And certainly I have faced times in my life where I have felt helpless in the struggle to follow God consistently with my whole heart and to walk in the integrity that he calls us to. And my prayers often come from a place of guilt and frustration. But Psalm 102 reminds us that God loves us, God has the power to deliver us, and he wants us to come before him honestly. We are to pray with confidence that God will meet our needs. Uh, later in the Psalm, as God delivers the, the psalmist from his suffering, 
As we pointed out earlier, Psalm 102 makes another prophetic statement. Of old you founded the earth, and the heavens are the work of your hands. Even they will perish, but you endure. And all of them will wear out like a garment, like clothing. You will change them, and they will be changed. But you are the same, and your years will not come to an end. Uh, these words from Psalm 102 are quoted directly in Hebrews chapter 1 as evidence of the deity of Christ. The world and all the problems it brings will wear out like a garment and fade away, but God is eternal and God is unchanging. He is the same from day to day and his eternal love and mercy will blow away all of the temporary trials and hardships we face here on earth. So we can come before God and we can call upon him with confidence. When we read Psalm 102, we get a double dose of the awesomeness of God. God is with us every minute of every day of our lives in this present moment. He loves us and he wants us to depend upon him desperately and bring our emotions to him honestly. God wants us to experience his love and mercy in our lives. So we're encouraged to pray confidently that his purposes will be accomplished here on earth. And beyond that, God is eternal and unchanging. The God who created the heavens and the earth is the same today, tomorrow, and forever. The earth will fade away and our present sufferings will ultimately be just light and momentary afflictions in comparison to the eternal weight that God has in store for us in glory. Uh, what a great place to, uh, to wind things up for today. Uh, thank you all for, for tuning in today. Thank you for listening. Uh, it is always a, a pleasure and a privilege and a blessing to know that folks are tuning into this video from week to week and journeying alongside me as I journey imperfectly with Jesus uh, here, in, uh, here in my life. So thank you all for tuning in. If you have questions or comments, please feel free to leave those in the comment section down below. Uh, and it's always a, a blessing to know that, uh, that folks are tuning in and uh, respond to, to questions. If you like this video, please consider giving it a like. And that will support this video and, and raise this video and other videos like it in the YouTube search algorithms of yourself and other users who might be surfing around YouTube looking for something uh, uplifting and encouraging from day to day. Uh, if you want to hear more from the channel, you can hit the subscribe key down below, the little bell, and that will uh, enable you to get notifications whenever new content is posted to the channel. Uh, next week, I will probably be here. I'll be out of town for a bit next weekend, but, uh, but hopefully able to get back online with another discussion from the book of Psalms next Sunday and uh, the Lord willing. And until then, may God bless you all and go in peace.